All right, and welcome back to your OU football update show. I'm your host, Dash. We'll be waiting for our co-host, Tag, here in just a few minutes. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for coming out and watching the show. Uh, appreciate all the feedback that we got. And just remember to make sure you hit that like, subscribe, notification buttons. Let us know how we're doing on the show. Appreciate everybody that is that has subscribed so far. Uh, but tonight, we're going to get into more OU football. Uh, and, you know, shout out to some of the other sports here in just a few seconds. Um, so thank you for joining us. And we hope that you stick around and let us know how we're doing. Um, lots to talk about tonight. Lots to talk about. We're going to be doing our way too early predictions. Uh, I kind of going against the grain here. I don't like doing this a whole lot. But uh, it was something that we wanted to talk about, Tag and I, uh, getting our predictions in. Obviously, we'll know more uh, as the uh, preseason rolls along the spring game. And then there's lots to go through in the summer as well before we get to our season in uh, September. But I'll be talking about that and many, many things tonight. So sit back as I get him on and we'll be going. Wonderful, wonderful night. Uh, enjoying your week uh, and and just having a great time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, this is my co-host, Tag. I'm Dash, and we're here to talk to you about OU football. Before we get to that, I want to give a shout-out here to my, my co-host for making his Hollywood debut in the movie <laughs> American Underdog. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Tag here was in the movie American Underdog, uh, and we'll get to talk about that here in just a second. Uh, but congratulations. Uh, how do you feel about being a movie star? Uh, not not a star, but I tell you, man, we spent the first probably 10 minutes of that movie <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to spot me in the background. <laughs> so I, you know, we, we saw myself a few times. So you know, it was just cool because um, – my son was here and my nephew and my mom, we were all watching it and I've been trying to watch it forever. I didn't get to go see it in the theaters. And then, you know, it was $20 to try to get it before you could rent it on, yeah. on Amazon uh, prime or whatever. But no, it was cool. I, my, my son thought it was cool. And it was, so it was, it was <laughs> too easy to spot you with your cowboy hat. So congratulations again on your, your debut. I, I showed the wife the other night and she had a blast watching it. So congratulations. And uh, the movie was really good. Yeah. It was, yeah, it, I love it. You know, American underdog is about Kurt Warner, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't got a chance to see it, go check it out. It's a beautiful, beautiful movie. Uh, and loved every minute of it. Uh, want to get a couple announcements here before we get into the show real quick, but, uh, want to say shout out to the, uh, men and women's good luck to them and the men and women's basketball in the tournament that coming up this weekend, both in the tournament. Congratulations to the Sooner men. Uh, OU ladies gymnastics and softball, both ranked number one in the nation now. Pretty fantastic weekends they had, and the ladies just won uh, their, their their game not too long ago this, this afternoon. Uh, so I think they're now 16 and 0, so congratulations to the softball team. And again, congratulations to Sooner Wrestling, uh, finishing second in the Big 12 Wrestling Championship. Uh, Missouri knocks off Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State was going for number 10. They didn't get it, so Missouri won that. And then I want to shout out to our good friends, Johnny John and his uh, channel, Sooner Magic Brothers, for always being on our, uh, you know, giving us comments, letting us know how we're doing. So I appreciate you, Johnny, and your channel's awesome. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. Sooner magic brothers they're all on youtube another great uh ou channel go check them out all right so tonight we're going to be doing our way too early predictions <laughs> on and and you know how i feel about way too early predictions but I, it's it's what we're going to be talking about is and, and it, it's going to be interesting to see where both you and i fall into this category we've had many talks about uh you know, where we think the Sooners will end up at the end of the year, whether they, you know, they're 10 and two, eight and four, whatever the case may be. I have, I have starred or circled five games that really have me 
thinking. I'm not saying we're going to lose them outright or win them outright, but they've got me thinking. Yeah. Uh, so we'll get to that I'd here in probably, just a second. I but I do want to give five. another talk a little bit about the, the combine that was this weekend. Nick Benito showed up, showed out. Do you think, because, and all the talk was that he was one of the best defensive linemen in the combine. Does that raise his stock? Maybe, you know, I don't know where, I think he was projected second, maybe third. Does that raise him maybe to a first round? Does, does he go before that cat from Oregon? Uh, I mean, obviously, if you do good in the combine, it's going to raise your stock a little. But then again, it's hard to tell, man. Like, you think you would think that, man, like, Perrion Winfrey killed the senior bowl, right? Yeah. Um, you, you would think. And to me, the senior bowl was probably uh, almost just as good as a combine. Yes. But the combine, to me, is more of a, hey, let's – Let's put all this talent on the field and let's get let's get numbers. Right. It's a numbers game for the combine. Whereas, man, you look at like the Senior Bowl or you look at in-game action. That's that to me that that bowls more than a combine. To me, a combine is like, okay, how fast can you run? How high can you jump? How much can you lift? You know, let's see these skills. But those skills are going to be a little bit different in game time action. I think Perry on Winfrey raised his stock more probably in the senior bowl than he did uh, at a combine. Yeah, but not to, not to downplay the combine. I'm just, to me, the combine is more about numbers. Um, but I mean, it, it, it's not going to hurt his chances. Will it get him to a first round? That's tough, man. It's, and it's hard to tell too, because you, you look at the, at the history of the draft, people that you think are supposed to be first rounds don't go in the first rounds. People that, you know, um, aren't supposed to go in the first round go in the first round. It's, right. It really just depends on it because when you get to when you get to draft day, there's a lot of, you know, Willing and Dylan going on, uh, teams with different needs. So it's hard to tell. I don't know if it'll bump him up there, but um, it, it definitely didn't hurt his stock. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely going to help him. Yeah. It's just a matter of uh, – you know, if a team is in need of of his skill set, right? Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent on the on the on the Senior Bowl, and and you're right, man. Perrion went off and won the MVP. So I mean, that says a lot. Again, uh, by you know, it just let coaches letting them play defense. Maybe that's. <laughs> I don't want to get yeah. into it again, but that's that's what he said. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. But hey, we had like I, I believe we had. 11 play or 11 players I'm not if I'm not mistaken but men like Nick Benito Perry on Winfrey I mean Mike Woods showing out all of them all of them had a great combine from what I what I saw you know even even Burkich was there had a, I mean obviously he wasn't running the 40 yard dash he's probably doing some <laughs> other some other stuff there but uh you know even I mean Kennedy Brooks another I mean he just showed up and was like lights out in in his 40 times you know I'm not saying he's hitting some of those those speeds that the kids from Baylor and 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 like that had but again you know it like they say you know you, you know you put on the pads if you're running that same thing which I'm sure those kids are still running the same speeds with those pads on that says a lot but you know Kennedy missing a whole season be, you know set out that one year they come in last year does great for the Sooners to see him stand out in the combine really gives me high hopes that we'll see him playing on and not that we won't see him on playing on Sunday, but this gives him me more of I guess, you know, a backing that he's going to be playing on Sundays. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I would be more shocked not to see Kennedy Brooks on a Sunday. Will he get a starting role? Uh that's gonna be tough to say. Again, it, it's gonna go back to what team gets him and um the need for him and, and his particular skill set. Right. At running back, but I mean, we will for sure see him on an NFL too NFL field too good not to. Jerry Jones, if you're listening, I wouldn't mind seeing him with a big old star on his helmet. If you're listening, um, no, I, I, but no, I, I mean, like I said, I mean, Asamoah, Jeremiah Hall, he was great. Jeremiah Hall, I believe, on Friday just blew everybody away with 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 what he was doing at the combine. Definitely going to see him as a tight end on some team 
oh, coming yeah. out here in the in the in the draft. I guarantee it. So congratulations to all those Sooners uh, at the combine. Um, Baker Baker's going to get his uh, his statue. Uh, April twenty third. Unveil it at the spring game on April twenty third. Uh, so that'll be exciting to see. Then obviously maybe we'll see another one for uh, for our Arizona Cardinal. Uh, quarterback as well um so what do you think about baker getting i mean that kind of cements it you know he, he's finally gonna get his statue there in heisman park what do you think about that i mean well deserved obviously kid was a walk-on you know what i mean uh it, he gave up playing at another school walked on here and i mean look at the great things he did uh you 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 knew it was coming because they have the the little Heisman Park there on the east side of the stadium. So, uh, long time coming, but well deserved. And I'm sure within the next year or two, we're definitely going to get to see uh, Kyler get his statue. So, uh, man, you you just love to see it. You love seeing those guys get to come back, and I'm sure he'll be there for that special moment. And then obviously the spring game, um, which. It's going to be interesting to watch. So, I mean, we'll know more. Like, we're, like we, like I said, we're getting ready to do some way too early predictions. Obviously, the spring game, April twenty third, we're going to find out. Kind of know. We'll probably know who's starting on offensive line. We'll know who's probably, uh, for the most part, probably starting at quarterback. Though we, we pretty sure we know. We've already talked. Right. You know, Gabriel's going to be starting quarterback. But, it, but it's going to give us a chance to see him, which, yeah. which I'm excited about. You know, because a lot of people. You know, you could sit there and say, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, I could sit here and look at his stats. Did I ever, I had never seen the kid play. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just going to be for, for OU fans who are excited about the transfer but have never really got to see him play. That's going to be the first real chance to actually see him in live action. So it's going to uh, – we're going to get to see just a little taste now. Don't get me wrong, spring game's not a, a, a regular season game. It's more like a preseason game, right? So it's not going to be full-on get to see his entire skill set, but we're going to get to see just a little taste of of what Dylan Gabriel can do on the field. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. And, again, we'll get, to see who's running. we'll get to see our running backs. We'll get to see what we, you know, what we lost with Kennedy Brooks and them and, you know, what's still left in our, our – uh, our backfield, you know, Eric Gray's still here. We still got him. So lots to see in the upcoming uh, spring game, the receivers, uh, you know, love what we're getting ready to see. We still have, uh, you know, Marvin Mims, and, and I believe we still have Calvin Thibodeau and, and a few other uh, great uh, receivers out there. So it'll be, it'll be exciting to see and what freshman's going to step up. Yep. Who's going to be the next Marvin Mims? Who's going to be the next – you know, Mar you know, I mean, talk about him about all you want. Mario Williams was a great addition. Did he show out all the time? No. But who's going to be those next players? I'm excited to see. This past week, they they did a presser, and all the uh, assistant coaches got to talk to the press and things like that. And there's a couple of them that stood out to me. But one was Kel Gundy talking about uh, Levy's – or Jeff Levy's uh, – I'll get it right. I promise you guys, I'm going to get it right one of these days. Jeff Levy's uh, offense, and he said he he said he'd have an easier time learning Portuguese than the offense of what is that good or is that bad? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> uh, you would think. I don't know. It, it's probably both. You know, it's probably like if a coach is having a hard time picking it up. What does that say about how easy it's going to be for the players? But then again, um, you know, they'll get it. It's only been, what, a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, it's it's weird. It's probably different than what they're used to, and it makes you it makes you wonder. But you know it can't be a bad thing because he's had successful offenses already in the past. So you know that – you know it's going to pay dividends in the end. It's just a matter of – it's different. That's probably why it's so hard for Kel Gundy to pick up is because it's so different than what he's been used to in the last several years. 
So now you you know you you get used to it. you get set in your ways on certain things, and then all of a sudden it's like boom, here's something completely different. So um, that's good. I mean, yeah. it's good. It's good for him from a coaching standpoint because you know it got him out of the the norm, what he's used to. Now he's getting to see, and you'll almost get to see. Okay, well now we'll really get to see what kind of coach Kel Gundy is. Because is he going to be able to handle on the coaching side of things a completely different offense than what he's been used to? Right. So I think it's I think it's good for him, uh, regardless, because it's going to be able to just expand his skill set as a as an offensive coach. Plus, I like what the unpredictable. You know, I think, and 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 even people that have commented on some of our past shows that we've talked about with with with, with Lincoln Riley as and uh, and the offense that we were running. He got predictable, and I think, you know, that's what I kind of like. You know, will it become predictable in the next few years? I don't know, but I like having something new and unpredictable, and I think it's good. Like you said, it, it, it's going to be good and bad. How long does it take him to get it to learn it? But in the end, you know, it could it could do a lot of things for us. You know, it could change. It could change our tune from we were saying, you know, twenty eight to thirty eight points. We hell, we could, you know. We could be changing our minds in the first couple of weeks going, oh, we're going to score 38 to yeah. 42 points. So yeah, it could yeah. be anything like that. But, yeah, that one just stood out to me the most, uh, you know, and I'm glad that they that the, the press got, finally got to talk to the assistant coaches. Sounds like everybody's happy. Everybody's ready to go, you know. So I'm excited for, for what what's coming up. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to go into the big meat of what we're talking about. But before we do that, I've got a poll question. Poll question I answer, I asked on on my social media earlier today, and then I'm gonna run it for them until we do the next video to see what you guys think. But today I asked if OU Texas, if if the state fair was not in play, if the state fair was not in play, would you rather see OU Texas still in October, or would you rather see them go head to head against the you know be the last game of the season? And would you see rather see them go head to head like against uh, Ohio State, Michigan, uh, you know, Auburn, Alabama? When when you when we see most of the rivalry games there that last week, obviously I don't want them to go up against Army, Navy. That's that's a game all of its own, and I love watching that game. But would you rather? I'm gonna ask you this too. Would you rather see them still in October, kind of in the middle, where they're on their own, or would you like to see what the ratings would be against those other? Rivalry games. Uh, I don't know. I, as a college football fan in general, I like it in October. I don't like, I don't like a bunch of rivalry games on one weekend. Because I mean, yeah, it's fun because it's like you go from game to game to game. But then at the same time, like, I think it'd be it'd be nice just to have them spread out through the season. I like OU Texas in October. It's been that way. Maybe that's just because I'm an OU fan. So it's you know, you always look forward to like the first, uh, you know, about the second weekend in October. You know, it's going to be OU Texas. I think moving. I I think anytime you try to move a a, a rivalry game to compete with another another rivalry game, I, I think that's just bad business overall because um, you only have so many time slots and you have a lot of games over a weekend. So I think I think spreading out like the big time rivalry games. Uh, is best for college football because you want to get, you want to maximize uh, the viewership of those right. games. Not just, and you're not just trying to get fans of those teams. You're trying to get fans of the sport in itself. Yeah. So I think having these rivalry games in October and even in September and in November instead of you know three or four or five of them, boom, all in one weekend. I think I think you're hurting yourself. Yeah. I think you're setting yourself up uh for failure on that one i think you've got to spread them out and to get it to where it's must it's must see tv yeah. because all these big rivalry games that's what they are they're must see tv for any college football fan so i like it in october uh plus you can't negate and i know you said you can't count it but you can't negate the the texas state fair the whole the whole setting yeah. uh of that game is just it's just phenomenal. I, I I've never gotten to go to the game itself. 
Uh, but a few years ago, I, we, I did get to go down and watch the game from outside the stadium uh, at a Bud Light tent at the State Fair. But just being in the environment was was worth going down there just to, just to say, hey, I at least got to go down there. I mean, I've never had the chance to actually go to the game. I'd love to, but it seems like something always comes up or I just don't have a chance of tickets. But, yeah, I, I like it in October, but I think, I think robbery games should be big robbery games like that should be spread out throughout the season rather than, you know, trying to compile them on a one weekend. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. And, and, and I think the consensus from what I've seen so far on, on the poll anyways, is most, most people like it in October. I love it in October. A, it's, you know, sometimes it can be cold, but for the most time, most part, it's that perfect temperature for football. Um, and again, I know I counted it out in the poll, but you're right. The 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 atmosphere at the fair is perfect. You know, you always know who won the game by who's still left at the at the at the fair. So either you're walking around with burnt orange or you're walking around with crimson and cream. And I love it. And that's what again. That's you're right. It's I love to see the atmosphere. I love the the like you, you nailed it right on the head of must see TV. You know, all eyes are. For the most part, that rivalry game, all eyes in the nation are watching that game. Whether they hate OU or they hate Texas, all eyes are watching that game. Oh, because yeah. Because it is. It's Absolutely. smack dab in the middle of the season. A whole lot of rivalry games are not at that time. And and I love it. I love that people get on there and, and you know, you get the, the smack talk from OU Texas. And, and then people that, like I said, the military people that we were with that hate OU because they were stationed in Oklahoma, they hate OU. I, I get it. I love it. Um, but, yeah, uh, so let me know on the poll. Let us know what you think. Do you like it in October like we do? Do you want to see it moved? Uh, but I got another question next week on this one as well that somebody brought up. But I didn't want to put it in this poll. But somebody else brought it up, and I'll ask you that next week. All right. So we're still way too early, still way too, way too early. We haven't even had the spring game. You and I talked about this last week that we wanted to talk about the upcoming schedule and and the games that we're playing. Where do we think OU will will finish the season? Right now, if I were to to pick a top two, I'd still have Baylor number one. You know, the fan the the, the fan and OU fan of me still wants OU is going to win every game. They're going to go win the Big 12, and they're going to win the national championship. That's the fan of me. I got it. The realist in me, I've got Baylor number one, OU number two. Right now, if I were to start listing all my top teams in the in the, in the the Big 12, I'd have Baylor number one because, like Ric Flair says, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Well, Baylor's the man right now. But yeah. that's where I have them. And that's, you know, obviously one of the good things for this year in 2022 is most of the teams that – we struggled with last year. We have at home. That's, you know, we get that home field advantage, and I like that. Uh, so we'll just start off. Uh, you know, we got a couple of home games right off the bat in September. September 3rd, uh, UTEP. September 10th, Kent State. Those should be – I'm getting ready to say it. Those should – I'm knocking on wood, guys. Those should be relatively decent wins for us. I won't say we're going to blow them out. I'm not – I'll never you, – you would think that those, Look, those two teams will be very easily handled, correct? Oh, so listen, this is going to be – yes, to answer your question. But I think those are going to be the perfect – those are perfect games for the this Oklahoma team going into the season because you have a whole new coaching staff um, a lot of your offense and defense is, is different. Not obviously not all of it. I'm just saying there's different pieces, just like every college football season. But to, for me, being the big coaching change, you know, it wasn't, we, we didn't just lose a coach. We lost like the entire coaching staff minus like a handful of coaches that are still, that are still left. Right. I think that's the perfect setup games for them to kind of get, grounded you know what i mean right. like yeah these are experienced coaches they've been in these games they've been in this in the, in the league for a while but i think with the new team everything kind of just 
I think that's the perfect moment for this team to kind of get grounded, get gelled together before we roll in. Because that third game of the season is when – is when and, and people will look at it like, oh, it's just Nebraska. Yeah, it's just Nebraska in Lincoln. Okay, yeah. this this isn't just Nebraska. All right, this is this is a this is history, right? This is Absolutely. something a lot of OU fans, uh, longtime OU fans, looked forward to this past season was this rivalry, uh, and and I I use that word lightly. You know, it wasn't ever a heated rivalry, but they were always two big name programs that you know always had good clashes, right? So everybody looked forward to that um, this past season. No different. You got to think of the Nebraska fans. Now OU gets to come to Lincoln. And so I think having UTEP, having Kent State at home, kind of get grounded, get your feet underneath you, and kind of get the ball rolling getting into that third week. Yeah. And that was my – that's what I, I told you at the beginning of this. I got five games, five games – that I got marked that are question marks for me. Uh, and Nebraska, that's the first game. And and, and I'll kind of go along with I, I, I always look forward to and I and I still think it's a heat arrival. Not so much now. Back in the day it was because they were always fighting for the Big 8 championship. And then as they moved into the Big 12, Nebraska was before, you know, Oklahoma was going through that transition of, of coaches till we finally got Bob Stoops. But then we started competing with them again as far as as uh, as conference champions but yeah i mean you're right i looked forward to that game last year i wanted i went into that game thinking holy crap yeah it's we haven't played nebraska in a long time but that doesn't matter when people say it's just nebraska because it is a rivalry game you're right absolutely it's in lincoln nebraska lost a lot of games last year but they lost a lot of games by one possession, and it could have gone Nebraska's way a lot more than, than what we saw. So I'm right there with you. This is a game that I have marked as OU needs to be on their top game going into Lincoln and taking on the Huskers. You're absolutely I, correct. Yeah, but I still don't think – so when you said that at the beginning of the show, you said – I got five games. I look down and I'm like, I could probably pick out. I didn't see that as being one. I do think that it's going to be a game that OU definitely has to be on point. They have to they have to come with their A game. But at the end of the day, I think, in my opinion, that's still a team that we should beat. I I don't I think it I don't think it's going to be as close as it was last year, but I think it'll probably be closer than what you know come the beginning of the season when we're looking at spreads, right. probably what it's going to be. Because depending on how Nebraska comes out, it's definitely probably going to be a double-digit spread. And that's just, again, this is way too early. We never we haven't seen either team play. But that's just my take on it, that chances are it's going to be a double-digit uh, spread in OU's favor. I think it'll be – I think it'll be closer than probably what the experts think. But not as I, I don't think it's going to be as tight as what it was this year I, or last year. I agree. I mean, I never like to count out rivalry games, you know, and and you know, it's just something because it's oh, because they do they kind of hell they these teams hadn't played in forever against each other, and there, you could sense a, a a history in this 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 game that was played in Norman. You could sense a little bit of history between. Some some ticky tack stuff and, and 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 you know grinding it out. Absolutely. So yeah, that's one for me. Uh, my next the next game again the second this is the second of my my five that I have question mark. Yeah, you know I used to think when I was growing up and and listen I've, I I've been I went to home games forever and a day when I was young. We had season tickets. You could always count on a guaranteed win with Kansas and Kansas State back in the day. Well, that's a lot of that's changed, obviously. So that was one of my games. seems to have our number a little bit in the last few years. We beat them this year, uh, but it's still, still, even though it's a home game, it's still kind of scary, and they're still out there. um, 
But maybe that unpredictableness that we were just talking about with the offense, maybe that helps us. Uh, K-State's obviously losing some of the, the players that they had. Don't Again, it's way too early. I don't know. You don't know. But it's one that I have marked. Yeah, so, again, so as soon as you said I have five games and I looked down, I picked out the five games, and, and it, it didn't take me long. Now, granted, this is my first of my five. Yours was Nebraska and, and now Kansas State. But Kansas State definitely, for me, is – is, and, I, and that's not me counting out Nebraska. Don't get me wrong. Going right. back to the – I got you. I don't count – I'm not counting out going to Lincoln. That is going to be a tough game. I just don't see it as one of the top five games that I'm I'm troubled with, right? right? Kansas State is, because like you said, we have had issues the last few seasons with Kansas State, whether it be at home or or whether it be on the road. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't I don't count out Kansas State at all. I and I'd like to say we get the win again at home. So at this point, I'm thinking we're. I think we're still four and zero. But again, I think this is going to be another game that I'm hoping I'm wrong because I don't know that. Like last year, I my heart couldn't handle the games that we all the all the close games last year. I probably could have had a, a heart attack on any of them. But um, you know, I hope I'm wrong. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't I like that's... close games like that. I mean, don't 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 get me wrong. I love good competitive games, but yeah. man, when you're a fan sitting on the edge of your seat chewing off your fingers, um, but yeah, that's 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 the first of my five that you got to be like, wow, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a battle because it always it has been the last few years. Absolutely, absolutely. I obviously we got October first. We got TCU. Not I'm not. I was worried about them as in, as I had been in the past. Uh, I mean, they still a tough team. They, they they still could probably they can sneak up at any point. It's not what well, I feel this year that I'm going to be worried about. Uh, I feel well, like we'll be five and zero going into October eighth against Texas. I feel like we'll be five and zero. That that's the problem though. To me, to me, this is a trap game for Oklahoma mm -hmm. um, on the road at TCU, playing in Fort Worth with a looming week following at the Red River rivalry. Um, right. That's – I don't have it marked. It's not one of my games. But you can easily look and you can say trap game. Without a doubt, that is a trap game for Oklahoma. Oklahoma has to be, be extremely careful going on the road to a TCU team that we're not worried about it's not. It's not being worried about TCU. It's being too worried about what looms the following about week. About Texas, yeah, you're right. You're so, right. So, but but then yes, like you said, October eighth, we're down at the Cotton Bowl. That'd be number two of five for me. That's my number Texas, three. Texas, Texas is always. It it doesn't matter, to me. That's one of those games that it doesn't matter, what the outlook is for either team. That game better be marked on your calendar yeah. because, I mean, obviously, as an OU fan, it is anyway, but just because of the the history behind it and the, the impact of it. But, yeah, without a doubt, that's definitely my second of, of three games at the Cotton Bowl. And, man, I don't – I want to say OU, but the way Texas came out, now Texas is going to have a chip on their shoulder because they had that game – well in hand before Caleb Williams came in and took over, but uh, you can't you can't count out the fact that Texas gave up a little bit. Yeah, um, it, you know. So yeah, Caleb came out, did his thing. The intensity, the, and you could see the entire uh, magnitude and the attitude and and the aggressiveness of that Oklahoma team once Caleb Williams came in. But then again, Texas made mistakes. Uh, OU capitalized on those. OU had some 50-50 balls that went their way. way. So um, they're going to have a chip on their shoulder. They had that game won last year, and, uh, you know, Steve probably feels a little salty about it. So yeah. that's definitely a game that's going to be circled on the calendar for a lot of fans and not just OU or Texas fans. I think this is going to be one of those 90s, 2000s, 
I got a, I got, I got a feeling this is going to be one of those 90s, 2000s, tough-ass defensive games. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure we're going to go out there and score 50 points to win the game. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. Obviously, you know, Texas brings in Gary Patterson to, to be a, a defensive – mind for that team um and we'll talk over, more next week we'll about this like i want to talk 50. about uh you know the first meeting of brent venables and steve and who's who's got more to to lose or win during that game so we'll talk more about that next week in ou texas uh i agree i i, I still think they come out with the win though i think for some reason we've got texas's number for the last couple of years i think we're still going to be playing and, and pushing forward uh, you know, and me being an OU fan, I'm never going to say we're going to lose to Texas. I will never say that. So we're going to win that game. I didn't say we are going to lose. I just said that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> I just said tough. I didn't say we'd lose. I said it'll be tough. I don't think, I don't think we lose. Uh, then we've obviously got Kansas at home. We won't have any freak power outages all of a sudden that, that – <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm probably the only conspiracy theorist on that one where they, they stopped the clock just to help them a little bit or lost power just to help them a little bit. And and I'm being silly when I say that. I, I really don't think that it was a conspiracy theory. But, you know, can, um, I don't want to overlook, again, a trap game. Again, right after Texas, a tra- it could and possibly be a trap game. Kansas has played as tough, even though they, I mean, you know, they beat Texas last year. Could have very well beat us if it wasn't for a heads-up play by Caleb Williams. Man, I don't know. I don't want to say, again, it's it's kind of like you just said about TCU. I don't want to say this. I don't know. Again, too early. I don't know. We'll see. Kansas well, can always be a trap game, though. They can always sneak up on you. So, I mean, it's absolutely a trap game because one thing you have to realize Coming off of Texas, okay, we play Kansas at home, and they need it because the next, really, from then on out, is is a tough schedule. Um, and I and I don't, I'm not trying to get ahead of what we're doing here, but no, I got you. I'm trying. If, 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 if you look, we play Texas. We get to come home and we get Kansas. I think I think we handle business with Kansas. I don't think it's as close, but they do have to be careful because it is a trap game. And it's not just a trap game. It's a trap end of the season. Right. Because the next five games after that, you're on the road to Iowa State. You're at home versus Baylor. You're on the road to West Virginia. You're at home against Oklahoma State, and then you're back on the road against Texas. Uh, man, like that's a gauntlet. That is a, like that is a huge, huge gauntlet. And and listen, people are like, "What West Virginia, Texas Tech?" Listen, I get it, but you're on the road. Those those aren't just like, "Hey, we're gonna hang out at home and play these teams." It's always tough to go to West Virginia and play. It's always tough to go to Lubbock and play. Those aren't. They might be. Games that you can call easy or, you know, whatever. But those are always tough games. Anytime you get into conference play, it's going to be tough, um, especially when you're on the road. So, and those games, those West Virginia, that West Virginia game could easily be another trap game. Uh, again, right in between, Kansas. Right in between Baylor and Oklahoma State, That that that's, I think, I didn't mark it as, as a – I'm concerned. Obviously, every game is going to be some kind of. Well, so those those la- three of those last five are my final three. Yeah. Iowa State, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. Yeah. Because I'm with you. I think the top three teams in the Big 12 going into the season are Oklahoma, Baylor, and Iowa State. I mean, sorry, Oklahoma State. Yeah. And then to top the top five off, Iowa State, Texas. right, and then Texas. I don't – I'm with you on Iowa State. I think it'll be a tough game. With losing Brees Hall and and, and and Brock Purdy, I think that gave me a little bit more room to breathe at Iowa State this time around. Well, they've really done it in for us. That's – Yeah. They – they 
Man, I tell you what, Bryce Hall killed us. Yeah. And and so did Brock Purdy. The, those two guys, man, listen, <laughs> I'm fair freaking well, man, because yeah. I'm I, I agree with you. I still think they're gonna be tough. I for some reason, man, Coach Campbell has had our number. Yeah. Like he has ever since he's been there, he has had OU's number. Whether we won or not, right. he has not made it easy. He's put, yeah, he's... And yeah. And, and and yeah, a lot of that has to do with Brock Purdy and, and Bryce Hall, but at the same time, like that coach just man, he just they they have given us fits for the last four or five years. And yeah, it's good to see them guys go, but I mean I wanna see it first. Like I'm yeah, not gonna believe I, what, like I, I can hey. breathe a little bit easier. I'm not saying I'm breathing <clears throat> a huge sigh of relief, but I'm breathing a little bit easier when it comes to this game. Yes, it's in Iowa State. Yes, Campbell, Coach Campbell's got a good, you know, he, I mean, he's been named for some of these big schools for a reason as taking over as coaches. Um, though I breathe a little bit, I still think we are 7-0 and when we go into Baylor or when, when Baylor gets here. So that is my next, that's my number four. Baylor, like I said at the beginning of the show, or when we were talking about this, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And the man right now is Baylor. That could be, even though we're at home, could be a nasty, nasty game for us. Listen, that, you know, uh, that defense is stingy as, and that Baylor team just beat a Jeff Levy team in the Sugar Bowl, put it on that that defense. Put it on Matt Carell and and Jeff Levy and all of them. So you know David Rand. He's, I'm scared of David Rand, and I'm just going to throw it out there because he's a good defensive minded coach, and he's going to have a stingy defense. But you know what? That that's that's going to be. I, I agree with you. So kind of rewind a second. I agree with you on the Texas battle. I think it's going to be a Texas – I think that one's going to be a defensive battle. I would be shocked if the over-under was 50, right. 50 to 60 points. You know what I mean? I uh, but this this one could be even less than that um, because Venables and those guys are going to have this defense locked in. I'm thinking we're, 35 we're, is the over-under for this yes. game. So I, I think, man, this Baylor game is going to be – I, and I'm, I'm not. I say this lightly. Again, this OU Baylor game is going to be like an SEC battle, yeah. Where it's it's straight defense. Like you're going to see some some offensive plays, but there's a chance that, like you said, thirty points over under, like between the two teams. Like yeah. it could be. It could easily be a 17-14, 21 21-17. Difference, yeah, and that's gonna be tough. And I, luckily for us, it's at home. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I think we have a very, you know, a very strong chance to be eight and zero going into this game. Yeah, eight, eight and zero going into. Yeah, eight and zero going into that game. Um, and that that could very very well be, uh, for first place. In, in the Big 12 at Absolutely. this point. And the thing that stinks about the Big 12 is it may not be the only time they see them. Yeah. And, I agree. you know, that's, that's – that would be the beauty, though, in if that's the one loss that we had. I'm okay with it as long as we get to meet them again in the Big 12. Big 12 I always yeah, feel – I agree. I always feel a lot better when OU has – because when OU's won the Big 12 in the last few years, they have beaten a team that they lost to during the regular season. Yeah. I'd rather do that. If I if we're gonna if they're gonna lose a game, I'd rather it be to the, the team that we have to play again in the Big 12 championship. Agreed. We just talked about West Virginia November 12th. We both kind of think that could be uh, you know, I mean, it's not like we had a, a great game against them earlier. But, you know, it could be. So, uh, November 19th, OSU got a lot of returning starters. Uh, they lost a lot as well. But, uh, you know, Sanders is back. Uh, 
You know, I, I don't think he was the best quarterback in that game. Obviously, this last year, uh, I think some things just didn't go our way. Um, and I'm not dwelling on that. I'm not going to dwell on that. But that's my fifth game, obviously. You know, as, as, as lopsided as the rivalry is, I still have to count that as one of my games that I'm, I'm, I'm definitely – Worried about because oh you know it's OSU it's a rivalry game any at any point they can jump up and bite us like we saw oh, so absolutely. it is at home I think that bodes well for us uh you know so I, I it's still one the one that I, I'm not saying we're going to lose it don't don't misread into that but it's still it's one a, of those ones that I have to watch that I'm that I've got on my watch list. Yeah, so that's that's definitely my fifth game as well, and and going back to the week before. Oh, you got multiple trap games throughout this season uh, with the way that this schedule's built. Uh, West Virginia being one of those, again, going on the road to West Virginia with Oklahoma State looming the following week. Uh, again, benefits Oklahoma to be at home for that game. Um, it's definitely a game to watch. Listen, the series could be lopsided, but when you look at the history of the series, OU has obviously a better history than Oklahoma State. And that's where the lopsidedness comes from. Now, you kind of get into like the more recent years. Oklahoma State is a completely different program yes. than they were way back in the day. Absolutely. So, um, I, to me, when people bring up, oh, well, this is what the series is. All right, listen, Oklahoma State obviously doesn't have the rich history that the University of Oklahoma has. They haven't always been a football program or a football school um but they are they have been in you know the recent decade yeah. right they're the second winning is so, they're the second winning football team in the big 12 behind ou in the last decade so yeah I, and again that's why i don't say it's you know early <laughs> if this was early 80s and and and, and early 90s or late 80s 90s i'm like shit this is a given we're going to beat them we're not yeah we're not we're not even talking about them it's right. going to be one of those teams that we just kind of breeze past. But OSU is a legit threat, always will be. Uh, you know, I mean, even if we beat them, sometimes it's – I mean, we've had to go into overtime a couple of times. We've had to steal a two-point conversion on an interception to beat them. There's, there's lots of yep. ways that Oklahoma State – so they are scary, and I agree, man. It, I, I never take – when everybody makes an argument, I try not to bring that – that that and I know why people do it, but I try not to bring that 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 record into it because this is a new you're right, a new team. They're the second winningest team in the Big Twelve. They can put it on us. Gundy is, you know, at times I've I've questioned Gundy's tactics where he could have just walloped us and kept if he just kept his foot on the gas. So I mean, there's times where you know we we went ten in a row, but we probably should not have. Right. And I'm being I'm being honest. As an OU fan, I'm being honest. But yeah, OSU is a trap. I mean, not a trap game, but one that I want to look out for that we possibly every need every to, year, every year it, within it's the always last a game, last always a game. Yep, one hundred percent agree. Yeah, and the last game of the season, uh, Texas Tech, which is usually. OSU, the last game of the season, we, we've switched it up a few times in a row, but Texas Tech, um, again, they're another one of those teams with a new coach, TCU, new coach. Um, you never know. You, I mean, we're a new coach. You just never know what we're going to see. Um, but it is at, it's at Lubbock and some, we, you know, I, I wouldn't write them off. We've had some crazy games with Texas Tech, some crazy games. So I wouldn't yeah, write him off. I mean, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a loss, but it's definitely a game that, you know, I'm not marking it on my calendar I'm like, oh, we got to watch out for yeah. these guys. But it's definitely not a team that you overlook. They definitely have to be ready to go to Lubbock. You can't just go in and be like, yeah, well, it's just Texas Tech. They're, you know, they're going to have to go out there and they have to play good football if they, if they want to win. Um, they definitely have a chance to go into that game. And, and possibly be undefeated, depending on how some of those other games go. But, I mean, I still think, overall, looking at the schedule, there's some tough games. And yeah. the thing with OU that really 
ticks me off sometimes is they lose games that they shouldn't yeah. shouldn't lose. Normally, it's it's those games that really irritate you. It's games that you're like, well, we shouldn't have lost that game. Well, sometimes we so, play down to the competition, play down to the level where we should. Like, nothing against Kansas. I mean, they're a basketball school. We all know that. We should be destroying Kansas in football. I mean, really. I mean, uh, hang at least a half a hundred, at fifty to fifty to twenty-one, 100%. something like that. All right. So right now, my prediction. Way too early prediction. I got us at ten and two still. I got yeah. us at ten and two going into the Big Twelve championship game. <clears throat> I um, I can agree with that. Ten and two, eleven and one. I don't see us losing more than two games. Normally, you know, OU losing two games. I don't know. It's it's going to be ten and two, eleven and one. Um, I would love for it to be twelve and zero. Going into the Big 12 championship, Absolutely. obviously. But, I mean, they have a tough schedule. Uh, yeah. Going to Lincoln, obviously the Cotton Bowl. Um, and then, obviously, just the the stretch of schedule between yeah. Iowa State and Baylor and Oklahoma State, and then you throw a couple of road games in there. That's just tough. a tough stretch, man. Like, yeah, yeah we've got these, these teams that we have marked as, you know, probably the top five teams right in the big 12 at home most of them but then you i mean you throw a road game in front of it and it's like oh hey uh and that's just that's tough man like they yeah. they i would have felt a lot better if it was baylor <laughs> oklahoma state both at home but then we have a couple away games yeah that that like man, those road games in between two tough teams are always scary especially going out out to the east coast yeah yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready. Again, this is way too early. We'll have more answers, more, you know, and, and probably even more questions about this team, <laughs> even after the spring game. I hope we get some things answered. I, like I said, we'll probably know who is going to be starting for the most part. Some things could change as, as fall rolls around and that, but we'll probably have an idea of what we're seeing. In that spring game, who are starting, you know, what our starting offense, what our starting defense looks like. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, again, I, I got, I got again, I got to say shout out to all the, the people that have been uh, giving us comments. We appreciate you. Uh, it only makes our, our channel and show more, uh, a, lot, a lot better. So I appreciate you guys. Please let us know how we're doing. Remember the poll? Would you rather OU Texas in October or at the end of the year? Let us know what you think about that as well. Um, so we will see you in a couple of days. We'll talk more OU football. Thanks for coming out. Uh, congratulations again on your Hollywood uh, debut. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, go see American Underdog. It's a wonderful movie. Uh, but until the next show, Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner, baby. We'll see you next week. See you guys. Thanks for watching tonight.